Welcome to the second of our videos on double replacement reactions. And we are coming to you not too live because I'm actually sitting at home, but coming to you from effectively Allen High School. And this is for our AP chemistry class, but it's also a merge with IBHL1. Now, this reaction portion happens to be very specific towards AP, but will also be quite helpful and is also is required for IBHL1 at our school. But in terms of the final test, they don't put quite the emphasis on this. Now, I'm going to do a couple of reactions here for you, showing you how we work towards the net ionic equation. Now, it's very important. One of your goals should be to streamline this process. I'm showing you all the steps, but I'm hoping in the very near future you won't need every one of these steps in order to get to the final answer. Now, in this case, it says hydrofluoric acid. At this stage, you might want to go ahead and identify that as a weak acid. It's added to a solution of, so that solution of means we're dealing with aqueous. Now, I like to bring states with me for a little while, especially my solids. If it's an aqueous, I'll probably leave it without the state and just understanding that I will dissociate that. So hydroic came from ide, so that would come from fluoride, so that would be our hydrofluoric acid, plus sodium carbonate. Let's erase that and get a better sodium there. So we have sodium, Na2CO3. Now, if on your work, you need to write charges above these, that's fine, but it better not show up in your final answer. If you wanna do this, sometimes it helps people decide what will be partnered with what and how they will be partnered together. But remember, this is very much frowned upon when you have a neutral formula unit or a molecule. Do not put charges in there. But as part of your work on a separate piece of paper, that would be fine. Now the H plus is going to dance with the carbonate, so to speak. Now be careful. We don't pay attention to the subscripts that the H had over here. We have to look at how it will pair with carbonate. You have to follow your formula writing rules to get that. Now on the other side, I had a two on the sodium, but when positive one sodium goes with negative one fluoride, it's simply NaF. You follow your formula writing rules. Don't bring subscripts forward. Now, we want to balance this and assign states to our products. This is an aqueous salt because all sodium salts are soluble without exception. This is a weak acid, plus we're going to see it's a very special case in just a moment. Now, remember our, your old biddy when you're working on the tests or BD cubed, however you want to think of it. One of our first steps is going to be to balance the equation. So I need a two here and a two there. That's what accounts for differences in subscripts on both sides. Now the second uh, D, or the first D, excuse me, is dissociate. This is a weak acid. We're going to keep it together. Okay, the analogy I used in class that seemed to be helpful is on Facebook, they're going to consider themselves in a relationship. And if you're in a relationship, you're not advertising. Keep them together. Don't put charges near a neutral formula. Now, sodium carbonate was aqueous. I would have put a little solid there if it had been solid because I'm tempted to dissociate all sodium salts. So I do like to bring my solids down with me. Now you may ask, why am I suddenly putting charges in when I just told you don't do charges? Well, these little guys are dissociated now. It's not a neutral formula unit. We have separate ions here. And in effect, you can think of it as changing their Facebook status to now single, and they're advertising, and ions advertise with their charge. Sodium saying, hey, you know, if there's a negative ion around, uh, I'm, I'm here and available. And the same with carbonate. When they're free ions, you have to show their charge. When they're neutral formula units, you can't show their charge. Now, I know some people get a little irritated when we attribute personal feelings and attributes to chemicals. 
but I think it's a it's an okay way to deal with it when we're just trying to come up with analogies for for memorizing. Uh, you certainly would not use that in an essay question. Now H2CO3 is a weak acid. We keep it together. Later on, you may want to jump another step on that, and I'm going to hold off and do every step individually. So when two sodium fluorides dissociate, I'm going to have two sodiums and two fluoride ions in the solution there. Now, we did our first B, which was balance, our first D, which is dissociate. Now the second D is delete your spectator ions. Any ion that is identical, same form, same charge, same number of them on either side of the reaction gets canceled. It's not that they're not important. We, we needed that ion to bring other chemicals into the solution, but they don't take part in the interesting chemistry. And the net ionic is all about the interesting chemistry. So that deletes our spectator ion. And now before I rewrite this, I want to go ahead and address that last D, decompose. You want to ask yourself, do you have H2CO3 as a product? Do you have H2SO3 as a product? Or do you have NH4OH as a product? And indeed, we have H2CO3 as a product. So when I bring this down, I'd have 2HF. Not going to worry about that sodium ion anymore but I do have to bring my carbonate. All I'm doing is rewriting what's there. Now, instead of H2CO3, we need to write CO2 plus H2O. And then we'd have two free fluoride ions. And that is your final answer. Your final answer with no spectator ions, no charges on any type of neutral formula unit, yet you must have charges on free ions that are being represented in the reaction. Now let me take a look at this next one. Uh, what's tricky about this is some of the wording. Here it says we have equal volumes and it's the same molarity. In this case the question is dictating our balancing. So it's dictating how we balance. So let's write our solutions. We've got hydrochloric acid. Hopefully you can see right away that that's a weak, or excuse me, I can't believe I blew it. That's a strong acid. At least I caught it. And sodium sulfite. You know the old saying, if you don't know your polyatomics, hmm. Okay. Now, in this case, you would be tempted to do a complete double replacement, but the reaction tells me I only have one to one mole ratio here. So I can't replace both of these sodiums. I can only replace one of them because I've only got one H plus. So if I could write it this way for now, if I had Na, Na, SO3, and then I had HCl, this H plus can only replace one of the sodium ions. And so only one will trade places. I would end up with NaCl plus NaHSO3. We would call that sodium hydrogen sulfite or maybe sodium bisulfite. Now this is a soluble salt. And so we need to dissociate that because we're done balancing. This dictated how we balanced. This is a soluble salt and this is a soluble salt. But pay close attention. Let's look at how it dissociates. I would get the H plus plus my Cl minus. My two sodium ions are now free and roaming around plus my sulfite. And I have a sodium ion from this, so there's my arrow. I'd have a sodium ion from the Cl. Don't forget your charges when it's a free ion. And a sodium ion and that bisulfite ion. Now, do you notice that I did not dissociate that hydrogen? And that's because sulfurous acid is already strong or weak 
Man, if the first hydrogen's weak, the second hydrogen's even weaker. So we are not going to dissociate that. So we've balanced, we've dissociated. We need to delete spectator ions. The chloride and the sodiums go. And we end up with H plus plus SO3 2 minus yields HSO3. Now we still have one D to go. We balanced, we de dissociated, we deleted our spectator ions. Now we have to look and see what we can decompose. This is not H2SO3, this is HSO3. And so I'm going to leave it together like that. And I would put this down as my final answer uh, for the sake of AP chemistry. So this was in your homework, you had one very similar. We're talking about seeing such words as equal volume. Sometimes instead of saying the molarity, they might say equimolar. You have to read it very carefully because they may be trying to just add extra words that turn out to not dictate the balancing like this did. So read very carefully. Take it step by step for a while till your mind wraps around some of those shortcuts. And I promise you by May, I'll be helping you with more shortcuts so we can streamline this process. That's it for now.